Okay. Good evening. Welcome to Tri-City Baptist Church Sunday evening. If you would please stand with me if you need your hymn book, page 392, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me. We'll do all four stanzas, 392. <clears throat> Good evening. Good to have each of you out with us. Uh, we have some special guests this evening, and one was Sam Brock, wherever Sam went. He was right in front of me. There he is. Uh, great to have Sam uh, from Camp Ironwood Air in California. We often talk about Camp Grace and how we're a part of the family of camps. So Brother Sam directs that and oversees the family of camps, how they help mentor 
uh, people into camp leadership, how they come alongside camps and try to formulate the philosophy for ministry and, and come alongside to help with the development and basically help with every part of the camp life. It's so great to have Sam with us. We're heading up to Camp Grace tomorrow. Uh, we're excited to go up there. I always love going up there for any excuse, but uh, he's coming here to look at some things uh, and some plans. So great to have Brother Sam. We're indebted to, to Ironwood. It was about 10 years ago when we lost the camp, and uh, we, were, we were kind of floundering just before the camp was burned. We were just kind of peeking out uh, with our own church abilities and experience in camp, the camp world. And we realized we'd taken it about as far as we could. And um, the Brocks and others on their team said, hey, we'd like to come alongside and help. And so we started a relationship there. Uh, it was rather tumultuous at the beginning. Uh, the pastors and those involved with the camp in Wyoming were not uh, readily interested in anything from California. I mean, if you're from California, it, you know, what good thing can come out of California? So amen to that. So so there was a little, some strange, strange uh, Wyoming flavor towards California people, uh, and then just some other issues. And it was, it was, I didn't think it was going to work. I really didn't think it was going to work. They came up and they, they met all the pastors or most of them, and uh, they weren't trying to manipulate a deal. They were, they have plenty of work on their own. Uh, they just were very straightforward and said, here's what we can do. Here's how we can help. And if that is a, a benefit to you as a group, we want to partner with you. And uh, the watch, uh, how the Lord worked in hearts and lives through that window of time was very fascinating. And then with the camp burning, um, many of those who had been very slightly attached to the camp in recent years basically said, now the camp went up in fire. Their assessment was that it was the judgment of God because we are working with people from California. <laughs> They did not all make that assessment, but can you imagine? Can you imagine <laughs> what in the world? Uh, but when the camp went up in smoke, some of the sacred cows uh, went up in smoke as well. And literally the cows, some of the cows up there and other animals went up too. It was, it was a big barbecue. Uh, that was the biggest fire in the history of Wyoming. It was a big fire, big, big fire. Uh, but that fire kind of purged some of those issues. And I, I can still remember going up to the camp after the fire, Sam and his dad, Walt Kane. And uh, we just sat up there and just looked at what was once a beautiful, beautiful, you know, setting on top of 7,000 feet of mountain looking at Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, 100 plus miles away. And we just looked around and it was just really, really discouraging. And we thought, wow, this, you know, does Ironwood want to work with us and work with this? And, and uh, they were willing to say, hey, no, I think that this is the Lord's will. Let's work together and, and get this, 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 this team going. And so they have put in countless hours of planning and strategizing and training and mentoring and trips back and forth and helping us build and finding uh, resources to build and so on. So thank you, Sam, publicly. Thank you. And your dad and, and the Armwood family, they've been a really amazing. Uh, we have a, a crossroad right now. We're working through some issues. There's always crossroads in ministries. And we're just at one of them now. And we're going to uh, trust God through that. So great to have Sam Brock. And then uh, Esther Colas and Margie, Marjorie, sorry, Marge. Um, I think I think she likes being called Marge more than any of those. So I'm sorry. So Marge, that's being very ornery. That's being very ornery. That's that's me. <laughs> Their mother just came back to town uh, from Wisconsin. Has moved in with the Colas family. So welcome. We're thrilled to have you here in sunny Colorado. What a blessing. And if I've overlooked any other visitors, uh, thank you for joining us uh, this this evening. So just a couple of announcements before we uh, sing and have a special music and get right to our, our seminar our training. Um, a couple of things regarding freedom that lasts. This will be the last of the seven videos we will show this year. We usually do not do videos in our services. Not that there's anything wrong with doing videos. I like preaching. I like others preaching. I like live people. But Jim Berg does such a great job on some of these topics that I felt it would be valuable for us to hear his heart and burden for this ministry that he started. And uh, next Sunday night, we're going to do a dry run with some actors, and uh, we're going to walk through what a Friday night Freedom That Last service looks like. Uh, it includes testimonies of those who are battling with sin, sharing how God's giving them victory, or how to pray for them with the challenges that they're facing. 
and uh, we'll have some of that. Some of that may be real testimonies of people in our church who uh, the Lord has given victory over, over whatever life-dominating sin, alcohol, whatever. And uh, we'll just walk through what that Friday night would look like so you can say, oh, that's what you're talking about. That's what it looks like. And I think that may help some of you say, you know, I could be a part of that. I could see myself being a small group leader. Or I could see myself helping, you know, cooking a meal for those that come on a Friday night. And I could see myself doing whatever. Uh, it was really neat. Last week, we had a couple come to me and they said, Pastor, I'm really burdened for this outreach. Would it be okay if we just started a small group of small group prayer meeting for, for the Freedom at Last ministry? Could we even come Friday nights? We'll go into another room and just pray. For, for this outreach and the people that are involved. And uh, that was such an encouragement to hear because uh, it's only the Lord that's going to give any of us the victory. And when you are way down with some of these things we're, we're, we're addressing, you need, you need the grace of God, you need the power of God. So that was a real encouragement. So uh, next week we will go through kind of how it looks. We'll spend a, a time of devoted time to prayer for this outreach. And then we'll just put, hit the pause and we'll wait to the new year, tying in with new year resolutions. I'm going to change them. I mean, this is going to be new. And so we are starting on the 13th of January. So the 13th, 20th, 27th will be the last parts of training on Friday nights, some fellowships some prayer times some meals. And then we're going to launch on February 3rd, our first meeting to the public. So if you have folks that you're praying for, concerned, uh, that has some, some life-dominating sins you're aware of, and they're looking for help, uh, you can share with them now, hey, in the new year, we're going to start this outreach, and we want you to be a part of it. And so between now and then, hopefully, uh, the Lord will bring some people into our heart, mind, and contact uh, to, to join in on the Friday night studies. Okay, just a couple of announcements. Um, this Saturday, we have a funeral at 11 o'clock for, for Mary Sturt. So if you're available, please join uh, the church family to celebrate her life. She was a sweet, sweet girl. Um, no guile, just, just straight, just what you saw is what you get, just a delightful person that loved the Lord, and um, you'll hear more about her life uh, this, this Saturday. Uh, Sunday next week, we do have the hearts class, which is your new members class. If you're interested in membership or just the knowledge of the church, uh, it will begin next Sunday in the Fireside Chapel. That's to my right, your left, in, in that room over there. So just a, a reminder to that. Uh, next Sunday morning, we have the Faith in Blue Day. We'll have a number of policemen here and um, some of the, the government, uh, the city officials and mayor and whatever, whatever. A great opportunity to, to encourage our police force and those serving in our community uh, to honor them, to get the gospel to them. Uh, after the service, there will be a canine demonstration. Uh, the Westminster police are bringing the SWAT team and all their equipment and trucks and so for kids, man, oh, man, it's really neat, neat stuff. Uh, I like the canines. Um, our church, as I shared this morning, is the darling of Westminster you know, currently. Currently, the change tomorrow. Uh, but this church is used regularly uh, for canine training. So it's not uncommon to go out to the fields and see them out here doing their training. Uh, we've done a number of SWAT work here during the week. We've had a number of murders, killings in the church building. I mean, just... We've had a lot of people die here. Um, our neighbors, we have to regularly tell our neighbors because they'll come by and see all the yellow tape around the church and like who died this week at Tri-City. And we say, no, we're just reenacting. The cops are doing different tests and training. And it looks like everyone's dying weekly. It's actually just the police training. Uh, they bring a lot of drugs into the church, high drugs everywhere in the church. And the dogs go find the drugs. Uh, they leave occasionally. And uh, that's why we have a lot of happy deacons here, a lot of happy deacons uh, find the drugs. Kidding, kidding. But uh, uh, we've got a great relationship with the city. And as I mentioned this morning, we were honored um, with our food bank that the, the uh, city council here that uh, gave to the church um, the Nonprofit of the Year Award. And uh, that was part of the food bank. And I was thinking about that this morning. Uh, that's a neat trophy, but there was two even more valuable trophies that the Lord brought in on, on Tuesday last week as two people trusted Christ in the parking lot. That's, that's the trophies we're looking for. Amen to that. <laughs> so praise, praise God. But that's, that's a neat testimony. And I thank those who work uh, with the food bank. It's been a very dynamite ministry. We think that the freedom that lasts will kind of be an organic outreach uh, from some of that work there. So do pray for these outreaches. 
Okay, I think that's all of my announcements. Rod, would you lead us again, please? Find your hymn books, please. Page number 37, if you need it. Let's stand together. Page 67, Thou Art Worthy. <laughs> Esther, that was beautiful. Well done. Well done. I hope that you'll keep singing and uh, continue to serve the Lord with those gifts. You have uh, been given uh, quite a voice. Thank you for doing that tonight. And Jennifer, thanks for accompanying. All right. We're going to go right to our video. Uh, this is an important uh, presentation, as they all are, on especially the, the point of assessing people as to what are their needs. Where are they spiritually and how can we help them? Uh, by pointing them to the Lord, and more specifically, what, what does that look like? So, Steve, if we're ready, we'll hit that, and then I'll make a few comments at the end. While they're getting that ready to go, if you did not pick up notes, 
this should say on the top, session seven, assess part two. So if you didn't get a copy and would like a copy, just hold your hand up for a moment and uh, they'll be handed out to you. And as soon as the men make their rounds, we'll get started here. Uh, Brendan Dorsling came to our ABF this morning and challenged our college students to think in terms of putting a team together for a musical ensemble for some special music. I think we'll have a good response to that. Uh, but it's also been said, you know, for our, our youth, our ladies and men in the youth and in the college group, uh, we're just starting our Christmas music. If you thought of being a part of the choir uh, or playing in the orchestra, now's a really good time to talk with Brendan Dorsling. He's over here. Raise your hand, Brendan, just for a moment if you do not know him. Uh, just say, hey, I'm, I'm interested. He'll talk through the auditioning process with you. But uh, I thought that uh, the choir, Steve, I'm, I'm bragging on Steve. I thought it was really, really well done this morning. Uh, very good, en good energy. Uh, just a great message. So thank you for your work. Uh, there's several new folks in the choir. I was talking to one of them and she has some health issues, but she said, you know, I just, I want to serve God. I used to be in the choir. I don't know physically I can sustain it, but I want to try it. I want to try it. I said, wow, what an encouragement uh, to see her heart to want to serve the Lord. Okay, everyone have the notes. All right, helping others overcome addictions. Session seven, assess part two. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Steve. And the team up there. Uh, let's talk about this for just a few moments before we close. Uh, any questions on the topic, the topic of assessment? Any thoughts on the presentation? Any comments, questions on the lecture tonight? Any thoughts? We've been a little disjointed. Yes, Larry. Yes. Yeah, I, th I think how it may look uh, with the food bank relationship, if we're doing our job and loving the people, knowing them, we're going to hear probably verbally, hey, I got a problem. Would, would you pray for me on this? And that's happening in the parking lot with some of our workers. I'll tell you, I'm praying each week or every other week with these folks, and they're starting to open up and share their problems. So I think some of that will be just word of mouth. Hey, I trust you enough to tell you, I got an issue. Would you help me with that? Uh, I, I envision us with a food bank, in this case, handing out with their with the food that's being delivered to them when they come around the building uh, with, a, with a brochure, bulletin, information. Hey, if, if you would like help in this area, we have this ministry Friday nights. And uh, this is the phone number. Or this just show up at church. So I, I, I see some communication, promotion, with the food bank workers and forms like that. Uh, I see it on the website, uh, but typically your, your best connection is the personal word of mouth, a friend or someone who's trusted you enough to share these things. But I think there's gonna be some, some, some people in the food bank uh, that, that's gonna say, hey, I, I need help. Um, you guys have been helping me physically and I just, I'm just struggling with, with fill in the blank, help me. I, I think we'll see that. Okay. Uh, I was a ranch foreman. The ranch owner gave me five young men, all older than myself, to supervise and, and to help build their self esteem. They were all city kids, all in trouble. And I'm just wondering in this ministry employment to build self esteem. If they're working, I worked those five, you know, quite hard. And they went to bed at night and they built self esteem. Is there going to be a way to connect for employment? Like, I don't know how many are familiar with, it used to be step 13. I don't think it's Christian oriented, but they have accountability. It's no government funds. It'd be like us, but you got to plug them into a, a job somewhere and help yeah. build self-esteem. Yeah, I, I think uh, in several things related to that. Uh, one, our focus is, is going to be on, on God's worth. So we're going we're gonna to share that focus rather than man's. So God's worth will, will be our focus. And then as image bearers and those who are in Christ, we find value in that relationship. So our position in Christ, those type of teachings, very important. So they understand uh, who they are. Uh, when it comes to work, work is a huge factor, huge factor. You have drunks who are, who are functioning drunks uh, that they, they can go and put in eight hours. 
you have others who, who cannot. My, my stepmother was not a functioning drunk. She couldn't, she couldn't keep a job. Uh, so she would, she would do things, mess up on the job site and it was dangerous. And she would be asked to go through programs, none of which would help. And so she couldn't work, she couldn't work, um, unfortunately. But work is very, very important. When, 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 when Adam sinned, one of the part of the curse and the blessing from it was, you're gonna work with this by the sweat of your brow. And we would do a, a disfavor to anyone to, you know, to not encourage them to do work. Um, so it's, I think we'll lead into some opportunities where we network as a church family and maybe with other churches. Hey, uh, is there is a place of employment? I'm connecting with this person. This is the person's background, uh, their experience. Would you be willing to take a risk with this person and hire them? So my son, Jim, is hiring, you know, I've, I've shared multiple times with, with you that he's hiring Marines they are messed up. And they, have, they do have drug problems. Uh, one, one of the biggest issues with one of his companies uh, is an insurance issue uh, for them to, as you know, as a truck driver with a CDL issue, if you're, if they do a blood test on you as a, with, as a driver and you come up with marijuana, even in the state, marijuana, uh, if you test positive marijuana, that's a bad problem. It's a bad problem if you're a truck driver or whatever operator. And so Jim's problem is hiring guys that are, are good in their, what they're doing, but they can't pass the drug tests. They can't pass the drug tests. That puts limitations on them. So uh, to, to find, find uh, if you're a ranch hand, I think the best place for a kid to learn how to work is on the farm, put them on the farm, put them to work, you know. And how practical is that in Denver? I don't know, but work's extremely important. Sam. Uh, I think in the same way that he was saying that if you get some diagnosis in seven minutes, uh, that that's not a good thing. I think sometimes spiritually we see some, some fruit and all about immediately we just not we know what their heart problem is i think understanding a person's problem will take time and and you can't always have the confidence that i have seen this person's heart i know what's going on so part of this relationship and i don't know all the details of what you're setting up but part of it is just being willing to put in the time in a messy situation to get to know a heart because that doesn't happen overnight just like the medical field can't make a snap decision yeah excellent yeah this is very relationship based and it's going to take a unique server here to to take the time to get to know people talk with them love them and it's not going to all happen in five seven minutes or one night this is we're looking as long as the lord tarries weeks months years relationships and helping people yeah and, and part of that assessment you know with the work that works very valuable you know, if, I, if I'm a parent, I'm going to, by the grace of God, teach my kids to have a good work ethic. That's one of the greatest things you can train your kids in is, hey, you got you to work. <laughs> and that they love their work. It's a great thing. Take another comment from uh, the assessment study here tonight. And I'll come back to the self-esteem topic. That's a loaded one. That's a loaded one. Theologically, it's a loaded one. So we'll come back to that. It's an important topic. So thanks for bringing that up. Someone else, a question and thought. Uh, I believe on page 46, those 10 categories, is there another category that you could uh, add to that? You kind of threw out the gauntlet there that he threw out to some of his peers and they said, no, I think you got them all covered. So uh, if that is true or close to the truth, close to the list, then it behooves us to say, okay, what are these categories that when we do assessment, when we're trying to learn the person what's going on, so we're trying to assess what the problem is, um, likely going to fall into one of those 10 categories. And then from there, what does the Bible say about that category? And how do we help that person overcome with the, with the Spirit's work through the, through the scriptures? And for some of these things you're hearing, it seems very overwhelming. You're saying, man, I'm intimidated. Count me out. I, I can't see myself doing this. And uh, this is a, a lifetime study, all of these things that we're looking at. And um, I think there's a part that has to be included in our training, a, a mentorship a coming alongside people who may not have the knowledge or skill set yet to help people. And uh, I love apprenticeships. I like the mentoring themes. Uh, I was talking with Jake Dirksen, who was visiting back here this morning. He finishes up his uh, medical training this December in the area of uh, chiropractic work. So what is he doing? He's coming back to Denver and he's going to work with uh, Dr. Mark uh, Jackson. And uh, Dr. Jackson was voted the number one chiropractor in the world. 
in the world by his peers. And so Jake is going to come alongside a very gifted chiropractor. He works on all of our, our teams here, the, the, the Rockies, the Avalanche, the Broncos, whatever, whatever. And uh, he knows what he's doing. Well, Jake has, you know, he has minimal training. He, he'll come up with a degree. But he, how much can he learn from that guy who's been doing it for now 40 years? And, he, and he's going to just track and, and walk alongside of Dr. Jackson and watch what he does and learn, learn from a master. And that's, that's a really good, good approach. Uh, when our son played football, we would take him down to Dr. Mark Jackson. Uh, ben was a quarterback, and after a game, he would look like a pretzel. He was just twisted in every direction. And then uh, he went to Dr. Jackson. He would straighten him out every, you know, after the game and then do it all over again and uh, work through pretzels week to week. Uh, but the point is with, with Jake to come alongside of someone. So with, with the counseling parts of this, uh, we have some people who are more experienced, more gifted, more trained, more ready to go. And it'd be great to have those people leading and bringing newer people to the to the outreach alongside to watch how they do it and learn. You learn, learn, learn by watching and learn by doing. So I'm excited about the mentoring, the training. Great opportunities. Okay, any other last comments here? I like the little girl says, um, "Mommy's going to be introduced." I think that's adorable. It's amazing, uh, you know. The vocabulary, the lack thereof, that little kids have, and sometimes as we go through these studies, some, you're seeing new words and more con new concepts and theories or whatever, and don't let those intimidate you as well. He's trying to say that you don't need to know all these things to be a good mm -hmm. server of the Lord, but it is it is fun what, what kids how how they describe things. Uh, yesterday, I'm really proud of myself. Um, went for a 21 mile bike ride with Kevin and Esther Colas, and I thought I did very good, but. Uh, I think it was Esther posted a picture of me on the ground, just uh, just wore out, and that really wasn't the real picture. I I attacked that mountain. I finished it. I finished it. Uh, but I was riding one time to a friend's house, one of our deacons, and uh, his daughter came to the door, and I was just on my bike, and uh, she looked and she saw that I had um, varicose veins, and she she ran in there and said, "Mommy, mommy, mommy, uh, Pastor has Velcro veins, Velcro veins." <laughs> And that's all she knew. She knew Velcro, you know, which she didn't know varicose. So I got Velcro veins. I do have Velcro veins. Yes, that's a problem. But we'll learn some of the lingo, some of the language. You know, I'm excited for these uh, for these upcoming times. Any other last comment before we close? Last comment. Yeah, just simple, simple. Christ is the solution. I think that's what he's driving at. That he's the solution to the needs of the human heart. All right, let's pray here together. Heavenly Father, help us as we serve you, give us wisdom, so if any man lacks wisdom, that you would give it to him or her liberally, abundantly, graciously, and as needed. And Lord, we have need of wisdom every single day, and especially when we get into some of these trickier, more difficult situations, we're going to need wisdom and discernment. We're going to need to have patience and mercy. We're going to have to be a friend, and uh, a friend that loves at all times. And so, Lord, help us to prepare our own hearts to be better servants of yours. And, uh, Lord, help us to keep growing in our knowledge. Help us keep growing in our experience. And help us, Lord, to serve you well. We, we commit this matter of freedom that lasts as we start in the new year, if you tarry and you will it, that we would be uh, as prepared as possible. And uh, you know the people that we're going to come in contact with. You know their needs. And may we love them as you love them and that you'd use us mightily. Thank you now for this good Lord's Day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.